Shalom. Welcome to this news update from current events going on in Israel. And this will hopefully keep you abreast of what's happening in the news. Uh, the first story, and obviously always our first story, is Iran. Iran, in its pursuit of nuclear weapons, has uh, really just broken out into absolute chaos, which we hope which will eventually end in regime change, although it seems very far away. What's happening in Iran? As we know that, Iran has, uh, is getting closer and closer to developing a nuclear weapon. That's something that the world has to stop. And until now, the world has basically taken two approaches. The first, which is what we're going to spend a, a couple of seconds on, is sanctions. The sanctions are designed to economically isolate the country of Iran. In so doing, we hope that conditions will get so hard on the average Iranian, they'll rise up in rebellion and cause a regime change. That's the hope of sanctions, or that the government will come to its senses and recognize the fact of what could happen if they don't stop their pursuit of nuclear weapons and eventually lose the country and on their own decide to end their nuclear pursuit. Neither of those seem very likely now, but if we increase sanctions, which is what the world is trying to do now, then it might happen. Russia and China are resistant due to their economic dependability on Iranian oil to stop sanctions. So in the meantime, the United Nations is not the route to go. The USA is legislating higher sanctions, as is the EU. The European Union. The United Kingdom has already passed sanctions, and Iran passed a law in retaliation to, help, to tougher sanctions coming from England to ban the, or to downgrade relations with Iran, with England, excuse me, and in so doing, the Iranian people took that as a key, rioted, and destroyed the, uh, the, embassy, the English embassy in Iran. Currently, right now as we speak, the staff members of the English embassy in, in Tehran are being evacuated out of the country out of safety of their lives. That's the first way, through sanctions, that we're trying to stop and make sure that Iran does not, per, does not attain a nuclear weapon. The second is much less, less known, but we all know what's going on, which is sabotage. By stopping shipments, by making sure that viruses are spread, like the uh, viruses that, that attack the nuclear, the nuclear facilities in Iran, Stuxnet virus, and various other methods of sabotage, scientists all of a sudden dying right and left in Iran, the nuclear scientists, We've been trying to sabotage their efforts at getting a nuclear weapon. This week saw a huge act of sabotage, we assume, could have been just an accident. They were in a town called Isafan in Iran, was a what seemed to be a, a missile facility, where they developed and researched and built missiles and tested missiles that could eventually deliver a nuclear weapon. The It was just a military facility, um, but uh, somehow, out of nowhere, there was a massive explosion, and the, uh, the facility is just totally destroyed. Along with the facility being destroyed, Iranian uh, military officials uh, died in the explosion, one of them being one of their top nuclear scientists. What one of their top nuclear scientists researching nuclear energy was doing at a missile site doesn't at all point to the fact that they're developing nuclear weapons. Uh, obviously, we're being facetious, and that's a key piece of evidence that Iran, along with the newest IAEA report that says that they are developing nuclear weapons is truly developing nuclear weapons. This site has been totally destroyed. Today, the information came out that it wasn't just a missile site, but rather that was a site where uranium was being enriched. When you enrich enough uranium, that's what develops a nuclear weapon. So all those factors together point to another act of sabotage on whether it was Israel that did it, whether it was uh, England that did it, whether it was America that did it, or a combination of all three, it would seem to be that yet another act of sabotage has been perpetrated against the nuclear program of Iran, and that is a very good thing. We can all breathe just a bit easier that they have been hampered a small amount in their development of nuclear weapons, but obviously until either regime change occurs in Iran or the Iranian regime announces and allows inspectors in that they have stopped their nuclear program, we obviously still have what to fear and a lot of work to do. The second story that we're going to concentrate today on is the Palestinian Authority. As we know, the Palestinian Authority refusing to come to the table to develop peace and negotiate peace with Prime Minister Netanyahu and with the Israelis, and instead is going on their quest for independent, uh, independent statehood to be declared. Um, they went to UNESCO, which is one of the branches of the United Nations, and had them recognize the Palestinians as their own state in retaliation of them not of refusing to talk to the Israelis. The Israelis refused to hand over tax money to the Palestinian Authority. What that means is that Israel collects, collects the taxes of the Palestinian Authority and hands it over periodically. When Israel is not happy with what the Palestinians are doing, if they feel that it's 
it's against all efforts for peace, Israel refuses to hand over the tax money. While that sounds like a great idea, there is another side to the argument, which is that the tax money that Israel hands over to the Palestinians, which is rightly theirs, um, uh, it goes towards security for the Palestinians. What that means is that the Palestinian Authority, which has helped in decreasing the amount of terror attacks perpetrated against Israel, is dependent on that money to continue their security efforts in protecting Israelis as well. Uh, so it's a big balance between the two. Uh, Victor Lieberman, who is the foreign minister, was against handing over the money. This morning, the Israeli cabinet decided to hand over the money, and that money will be transferred. The third and last story that we're going to concentrate on are Egyptian elections. Uh, Egypt is going through its birth pangs of a true democracy and has a long, drawn-out process of elections. They have their first elections this week, which saw as a precursor to those elections, saw uh, the 19th bombing of the pipeline that brings oil from Egypt to Israel and Jordan. Uh, what the fear with the Egyptian elections is that a radical, whether it be the Muslim Brotherhood or another former Muslim Brotherhood, will take over in Egypt as and win their elections. That obviously would not be uh, favorable towards continued peace between Israel and Egypt, and we hope for good results out of that election, a true democratic government coming out of Egypt. That's all for our news today. Uh, check out the Jerusalem Post, Haaretz, CNN, Fox, George Report, all different, Ynet, all different sites that will help you keep up with the news. And until next time, Shalom.